Hey, how's it going guys? We're back again with the Xbox 360 software only hypervisor exploit. This exploit just keeps getting better and better with constant improvements. And the big one to cover here in this video is that we can now use a different game to load the exploit, which appears to be far superior. And this is Rock Band Blitz. So if you have that game, you can use this to trigger the exploit. Previously, we had to use Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, which was a physical copy that you would have to buy in order to run this unless you had a flash drive. However, with this game, Rock Band Blitz, which is an Xbox Live arcade game, you don't even have to have the full version of the game. You can use the trial version, which you can just download and put on the USB drive, and you'll be able to load it on your retail system, and you can use that to trigger the exploit. Not only that, but this exploit normally takes about 20 minutes to execute with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. With this particular version, though, the background while you're loading the exploit continues to move. There's an animated background. Not only that, but it also has some music that plays in the background. And if that music stops and the screen freezes, then you know that the exploit has failed. So you can restart the exploit instead of having to wait 20 minutes like you do with the previous game. So these are a bunch of improvements that have now been made thanks to just being able to use this game instead and no longer having to buy a separate game to run this exploit. You can just use a free trial of Rock Band Blitz. So Rock Band Blitz was added by Invoxy Play Games or Emma. And of course, the original exploit itself created by Grim Doomer. So if this is your first time hearing about the Xbox 360 BAD update, it basically allows you to run homebrew applications and emulators and unsigned code on your Xbox 360 without requiring any kind of hardware level exploit. So no RGH or no JTAG required here. Uh, it does only have a 30% success rate and it is a tethered exploit. So whenever you reboot the console, you will have to run the exploit again. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up using this version of the game. Now I'll try to leave a download link to the game in the description. This is a bit dodgy for me to do, I guess, but at the end of the day, it is a free trial game anyway. So, you know, the game is free at the end of the day, so I don't think it should be too much of an issue. But if there's not a download link in the description for this, you'll know why. Um, but anyway, hopefully I can leave this in the description so you can just go ahead and download the free trial here of this Xbox Live Arcade game. And then not only that, of course, we're going to want the Free My XE beta, which applies the HV and kernel patches to allow you to load homebrew applications from the dashboard. So we're going to want to go ahead and download that. And we want to download, of course, the exploit itself, the Xbox 360 bad update. So we can head over here to the latest release and download the retail USB zip and the tools.zip file. And then you also want to download any other additional homebrew apps that you want to run on the system. So XEX menu, of course, I'm also using Aurora and SNES 360. So go ahead and download any homebrew that you also want. Some prerequisites for this, you do need to be on dashboard version 17559. You can head into your system settings and go to console settings and then hover over system info to check your dashboard version. I'm already on 17559, but if you're on an older version, you can download the system update from xbox.com. The link will be in the description. Just verify that it is the version 17559 zip file. Once it's downloaded, it should say it in the file name. And then you can open it up and extract the dollar sign system update folder to the root of a FAT32 formatted USB stick. And then plug that USB into your Xbox and it will give you the update prompt. And you can then update your system. I would also recommend disconnecting from the network so that you don't end up getting your console banned from Xbox Live when running Homebrew on your console, although it's generally not recommended to run this if you are uh, planning to use Xbox Live in the future because your console could still get banned by you know some kind of affiliation with some of your profiles having achievements and stuff unlocked from Homebrew applications. So anyway, with all those prerequisites out of the way, let's go ahead and look at how we set this up with this new game. So what we're going to want to do, first of all, is get a USB drive that's formatted in FAT32 format. You can use Rufus to format the drive in FAT32, or you can use the Xbox itself, which has the option to format uh, the drive in the storage settings, and that will format it to FAT32 format. Then what we want to do is plug that USB into our computer here, and we can head over to the View section, Show, and make sure that Hidden Items is ticked, along with File Name Extensions, in case you formatted it on the Xbox 360 and you have the Hidden Content folder. We need to make sure that shows up. Then we're going to open up the Xbox 360 BAD Retail Update, and now we can select Rock Band Blitz instead of Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, and we can extract these folders out to the root of our USB stick, and that gets the exploit installed. And then from there, we can go into the bad update payload and delete the default.xex file that's inside here. Open up the free my XE beta. 
and extract the XCX file into the bad update payload folder on the USB and rename it to default.xcx, so default.xcx. And from there, we can go back to the root of the USB drive and install a number of different things. So we want to install the actual trial of the game itself if you don't already have it. So we'll open up this um, RAR archive. You need to have 7-zip or WinRAR in order to open these files. And then we're just going to take the content folder here and extract it to the root of our USB. And that will get the game demo installed that we can use to run the exploit. I'll also leave the homebrew in the description. So we need XCX menu. So we'll open this up uh, with WinRAR or 7-zip and then go into the content folder into the 000 folder. And then we're going to take the code 9999 folder and extract that out to the folder with all the zeros inside content. So we'll just copy that over to get XCX menu installed so we can run it off the USB once we have the exploit running. And that will then allow us to launch additional homebrew applications. So once we've done that, we can head back out to the root of the USB. And now we can install any additional homebrew apps that we want. So SNES360, I'll copy that over. Just as an example, I'll also go ahead and add Aurora. So I'll create an Aurora folder, open up the Aurora release. Again, link will be in the description and we'll extract that out to the Aurora folder. Again, making sure you have 7-zip or WinRAR. Okay, and once that is done, we should be all good here. The last thing we need to do is patch the homebrew apps to make sure that they can run with the exploit. Again, future versions of these homebrew apps might have a version that targets this exploit, so they'll already be patched. But in the early stages, we need to patch them manually. So what we're going to do is open up the tools.zip that we downloaded from the exploit and extract the XE patcher application over to our desktop. From there, we can open this up and then right click in this folder with xcxtool.exe and open in terminal to open up a command window in here. And all I'm gonna do is just press the up arrow key on my keyboard to enter the commands I've done on my previous videos. But what you wanna type in is dot forward slash xcxtool.exe space dash m space r space dash r space a. That is the command you want to enter. It will be linked in the description. Then you just wanna take any xcx files for any homebrew apps that you have like Aurora and just drag that in and then press enter to patch the executable to remove all limits and set it to retail mode, which will allow it to load with this exploit. And of course, we also want to do the same with any other homebrew apps we have. So I'll press the up arrow key on my keyboard to re-enter the command, get rid of the Aurora file path, and I'll take my SNES XCX file and drag that in and patch that one as well. So you just wanna do this to any homebrew applications or emulators that you're wanting to run using this exploit and then we should be all good. So that's the USB drive fully set up and prepared. So we can go ahead and eject this drive and plug it into our Xbox 360. Okay, so once we're on the Xbox with this particular game, we do not need to sign into a specific profile. So you can use any profile that you want that's on your Xbox, although it would be recommended to create a new account, uh, just like a throwaway account that you can use for running Homebrew. We can then go to the My Games section and the game should show up, the one that's on the USB drive, which is Rock Band Blitz. And this is just the trial version, which is accessible here, so we can run the game. Another thing that makes this game better for loading the exploit is that we can load it immediately as soon as the game loads, right from the start screen. Whereas with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, you have to go into Free Skate and go into a bunch of different options in the menu in order to load the save file. Whereas this game, as soon as we're in the start screen here, we just press A, and it will immediately start running the exploit. Now it may prompt you the first time to select a storage device to load the save file from, in which case you're gonna to want to select the USB storage device as the device that has the save file on it. And that is what you're gonna to want to do there. And you can see it now says it's running the exploit. And now it is just a waiting game. Now, if you run into any problems while trying to run this, like it freezes during like loading or trying to you know, check for DLC content, you need to make sure you don't have any DLC or custom tracks for any Rock Band games installed on your console. If you do, you will need to transfer those or move those to, say, another USB drive and then make sure that USB drive is not connected while loading the exploit because you do not want to have any custom tracks or DLC for any of the Rock Band games installed while you're trying to run this because it will interfere with the exploit. So that is an important thing to note there. But as you can see, we are running no problem here. So once you get to the running exploit stage, you just have to wait. You'll see different lights on the front of your console change as the exploit is running. 
you'll know it's working once all four LEDs are lit up at the same time on the front of the console. That means it's running successfully. But the other important thing here is previously you'd have to set a 20 minute timer and wait for it to get to 20 minutes. If it's still in the loading screen after 20 minutes, you would then uh, have to restart and run it again. The good thing about this is we can actually see the background is still animating while we're loading the exploit. And then not only that, but we also have music that's also playing in the background. I probably have to mute it for copyright reasons, but there's music playing in the background as well. So if that music stops and the screen freezes and the, the background is no longer animating, then that means the exploit has failed and you can just turn it off, turn it back on and try and run it again. And then you can restart and rerun the exploit. So just as an example here, you can see that the screen has frozen here. So I turned off the console, rebooted, went back on the game, loaded it again and had to do that three or four times before I managed to get it to load successfully. But as you can see, once it loads successfully, you'll get a black screen. When you connect your controller, you should get the message prompt that the Free My XE has loaded successfully and you'll get the messages that you can click OK to. Um, I'm using the older version of Free My XE here because this was recorded previously. But obviously you'll be running the latest version there. And once it's loaded, it should have patched the HV and kernel and it will then return you back to the dashboard. And once you're on the dashboard, you can then head back to your My Games section and you can see we have a bunch of new games showing up here. And that's because this hard drive is also used on my RGH. So it has a bunch of games in games on demand formats that normally uh, would not appear in retail mode, which did not appear, of course, when we first went to run the exploit. But now that we have everything patched and the exploit is running, they're all available and they're all accessible here. And that will also include, of course, XCX Menu, which you should find there on your USB. So we can go ahead and launch XCX Menu to be able to load other homebrew applications. So once we get XCX Menu loaded, we can press right bumper RB to switch to the drives. And then from there, we can basically select any other homebrew app we want to load, like Aurora. I can just select Aurora with A and then select the Aurora.xcx file to launch it. And because we already patched it with XCX Tool, it should be able to load successfully. If it wasn't patched, it would give us a game error and kick us back to the dashboard. But because we patched it successfully, it loads correctly. When you load it for the first time, it does take a long time to load, but after a while, it should then load us into the Aurora Dash. I do have my uh, game inserted at the moment, which is Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. And I can add other homebrew apps in Aurora by pressing start. And then of course, heading to content and adding a path to scan and then selecting the USB drive by hovering over it and pressing Y to select it, and then selecting the save option, which will then allow us to scan all of the applications that it can find on the USB. And of course, I have my SNES 360 on there, as well as Aurora itself, so it should pick those up, and then we'll be able to launch those applications from Aurora as well. It's essentially how you get things up and running. I'm also able to load some games from the hard drive as well. You can patch them with XCX Tool, as I showed with the homebrew applications. But I do have a couple of games that can launch just as is uh, from the uh, My Games section, like Geometry Wars, for instance, which is able to be launched. So I'm able to go ahead and launch my Xbox games as well as my homebrew applications and emulators using this exploit. And again, this is a much better way to do it because again, you don't have to buy a copy of you know Tony Hawk's American Wasteland to run it. You can just get this trial version of Rock Band Blitz and you'll be able to get the exploit loaded with the trial and it loads a lot faster because you don't have to go through a bunch of menu options to load it. It's just right on the start screen. It will immediately load the exploit. But not only that, but you can easily tell when the exploit has failed as soon as it fails because the screen freezes and the music stops playing and then you know that it's not worked and you can restart and try and run it again to get the exploit running much faster instead of having to wait 20 minutes. Now, of course, this is my third video on the topic here. And if any other new games get added, I'm probably not going to make a new video just for each game that gets added that you can use to run this exploit with, because I think we're pretty much where we want to be now with a game that we can use as a trial version, uh, which is pretty much the perfect setup uh, without having to actually go out and buy a physical copy of a game to load this exploit with. So even if other games come out in the future, that, that will be great. But unless they significantly reduce the, the time it takes to load the exploit, I'm probably not going to cover each new game that gets added with this exploit. The only reason I covered this one is that you don't have to buy this game to run the exploit, which is a pretty big, significant change. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.